So now let's look at the response uh, of the model to a positive technology shock. So technology shocks are typical shocks um, in the micro literature, uh, RBC models, uh, people focus on technology shocks. You Keynesian models is also, uh, as, you know, uh, people often look at the impact of technology shocks. So let, let's see what happens if we have a technology shock in our model. Uh, again, by comparative static. So, and um, let's look at a positive uh, technology shock. So positive technology shock would be an increase in A. A, you remember, is a technology parameter in the production function. Um, so, We'll follow some strategy as before. Do you remember that the solution of the model, uh, you know, once we reduce the dimensionality of the model as much as possible, it boils down to a, a two by two system. So we have our two key variables, product market tightness, labor market tightness, and we have two equations. So you remember that on the one hand, uh, product market tightness is given by, uh, you know, as to satisfy an equation that says that uh, product market tightness is a function XL of theta L because it came from a uh, product a labor market analysis, which is equal to F minus one uh, W over P A alpha H one minus alpha F hat of theta one minus alpha one plus tau hat of theta alpha. So this is a first relationship between product and labor market tightness. And then we have a second one at the same time, X also has to be equal to XP of theta. This involves more product market uh, side of things, which is tau minus one. Uh, and then we have two uh, elements here, key epsilon, mu alpha, W, H times, one over f hat of theta, one over epsilon minus one minus one. Okay. Um, and here, so we are looking at uh, an increase in A. So what's very nice is that A doesn't show up in our second equation, xp of theta. So this relationship, xp of theta is not going to be affected, but A does appear here in the xl of theta. And in fact, we have an increase in A. Uh, because A is in the uh, denominator in that Excel of data, so the whole terms between the brackets going to fall, and because F minus 1, that's an increasing function, in the same way that tau minus 1 is increasing, it means that the whole, if A goes up, uh, the whole term in the, at, at the, you know, in the parenthesis is going to fall, and if you put it through F minus 1, this is going to fall. So, XL of theta for any theta is going to be uh, is going to be lower than where it was. So graphically, let's look at what happens. So uh, you know, we'll, uh, so we always had X. We had theta on the horizontal axis. Okay, and then we had. Uh, So we have a first curve, this is xp of theta, which um, we had said was uh, strictly decreasing in theta here, here, and then we have xl of theta, which is strictly increasing in theta, and having an asymptote here, we have the original solution, theta is here, x is here, original solution, of the model. Now we are looking at what happens when we have an increase in A. So we said XP of theta, that doesn't change because A doesn't show up in the expression of XP of theta. Excel of theta on the other hand, we see because A is going to, uh, A is higher, uh, everything in the bracket is lower and times F minus one that's lower. So Excel of theta is going to be uh, uh, to uh, fall. So we'll have something like this. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, uh, you know, the asymptote 
of the function, if A is higher, this asymptote here is going to move out. So, you know, we can also shift basically the whole Excel of theta is shifting out. So, we have something like this. But, you know, it's, it's not very relevant. But uh, what's key is that, what's key here is that Excel of theta uh, is going to be lower. So that's what happens when A goes up. So now what happens to our, uh, what happens to the solution of the model? Well, we have a new solution that's here. So we have a new theta that's here and we have a new X that's here. So basically what we see is that labor market tightness is going to increase, but product market tightness is going to increase. So we have very different comparative statics than what we had uh, with demand shock, with a positive demand shock, we saw the two tightnesses go up. Both markets are tighter. Here, it's not true. With a positive technology shock, labor market tightness goes up, but a product market tightness uh, goes down. Uh, so different uh, responses of uh, the two variables. So we can sum up our results. after an increase in A uh, technology. In technology A, what do we have? So first of all, increase in technology A. So we saw that uh, labor market tightness, that's going to go up. And of course, so we know that that's going to have an impact on all the trading probability. So, uh, job finding probability that's going to go up. As a result, you know, the unemployment rate is 1 minus F of theta that's going to go down. So we have less unemployment. Recruiting probability that's going to go down. Matching wage that's going to go up. Okay. Uh, but product market tightness, on the other hand, that's going to go down. Uh, so the two, you know, while the labor market is tighter, the product market is slacker. So that means, you know, selling probability that's going to fall, the rate of idleness on the labor, on the product market, that's going to go up, and buying probability, uh, that's going to increase, and the wage tau x, that's going to fall. Okay, um, so now what about quantities? Well, very interesting. So uh, what about employment? Well, we know that employment, we can always read it off the labor supply curve. The labor supply curve is not affected by a change in technology. So the fact that labor market tightness goes up means that employment is going to go up. So L, F hat of theta times H, and theta goes up, F hat of theta goes up, L is going to increase. What about output? Well, so, you know, we can say oh, we can read output off of the aggregate supply curve, but the aggregate supply curve is affected by technology. Um, so, you know, you have higher technologies that tends to boost aggregate supply, but you have a lower product market tightness, so you're lower on the aggregate supply curve that tends to reduce output. So you have two forces that move in opposite direction. So looking at the aggregate supply curve is not useful here. But what you can look is at the aggregate demand curve, because the aggregate demand curve is not affected by a change in technology. Uh, so we have a stable curve. However, uh, tightness on the product market is falling. And so we are going to move down actually, um, down the aggregate demand curve. So we'd have higher output. So you know that Y is actually key epsilon. So here I'm just giving you the fact that Y can be read off of the aggregate demand curve. One plus tau X <coughs> epsilon minus one times mu over P. You can see that here, nothing in this equation uh, nothing in this equation is affected by the change in technology. The only thing that happens is that X, uh, so this here we have that, a, uh, X is lower, the product market tightness, so tau of X is lower, so 1 plus tau of X epsilon minus 1 is lower, and because that's in the denominator, Y is going to increase. So output goes up. So here actually with higher technology, uh, actually very much like when we have a boost in aggregate demand, you have more quantity, so higher employment, higher output, 
higher labor market tightness. So the only thing that's different compared to a boost in aggregate demand is that your product market tightness is going to fall. So I can flag that just to say that um, this is the only thing that's different between a technology shock and an aggregate demand shock or everything else moves the same. So if you wanted to be able to figure out whether it's technology shocks or aggregate demand shocks that uh, uh, generate business cycle, it's really key to look at what's going on on the product market. You really have to look at what's going on with uh, product market tightness. Because if in good times you have a very tight product market and it's easy to sell stuff, then it says aggregate demand. If in good times it's actually hard to sell stuff uh, and you have a low uh, product market tightness and you know that it's technology short. But of course, in reality, we know it's very easy to sell stuff in good times. Firms like good times, they can sell a lot of their stuff. They have high utilization, they have low idleness. So this is, you know, intuitively, we know that business cycles are about aggregate demand shocks. Um, but here we have a key, you know, we have an actual um, way to formally test and separate aggregate demand from technology shock by looking at what happens to the product market tightness. Um, so that's key. Uh, so here we, you know, uh, one kind of takeaway from this analysis is that the key difference between uh, technology and AD <coughs> shocks is, oops, sorry. is the response of uh, X. So it's therefore key to look at a um, product market tightness um, to separate <coughs> AD and technology shocks. But it's true that otherwise, um, Otherwise, this technology shock and aggregate demand shock, they look very much the same in the sense that they boost both quantities, they boost uh, employment, they boost output, and they also boost labor market tightness. Um, but once you look at product market tightness, you see that there is actually um, a key difference. So that's interesting. Um, so here we have all the quantities, we have all the trading probabilities. Um, Right, so, so this is what we have. If we want to know what happened, number of producers, you know, this is unclear due to the increase in tightness. Um, if you want, well, you know that output um, goes up. Oh, here, so here we know unambiguously what's going to happen to consumption because you know that output goes up, but you know that the product market is actually less tight and so your matching wage is less. So you know that consumption also goes up here unambiguously. Um, so we can note that. C, consumption is Y divided by one plus tau X. And of course, here we've seen that output goes up, but we've seen that tau X, the matching wage goes down because it's easier to buy when you have a positive technology shock. So here we know also unambiguously that uh, consumption is going to increase when you have a, a positive aggregate demand shock. Um, we wouldn't have been able to say that with a positive uh, technology shock, uh, with a positive aggregate demand shock. Sorry, here we're looking at technology shocks. Um, but here you can see that, uh, you can see that clearly. Um, so these are the, you know, these are the interesting things um, that happen here. Or oh, last thing you can do in case you're interested, for instance, you could ask, well, what will happen to vacancies? if we have um, a positive technology shock. Yeah, actually, it's also easy to say what happens. So you know that uh, vacancies v hat, uh, the number of vacancies that have to be posted, uh, we know that it's employment divided by Q of theta, which is a recruiting probability because number of vacancies time recruiting probability has to be equal to employment here. Um, and then we've seen that with positive technology shock, we know that the employment goes up. And we also know that the recruiting probability goes down because tightness is higher. And so here, unambiguously, we can say that the number of vacancies is going to increase. Uh, okay. And actually, we could also have said that after a positive aggregate demand shock. 
For the number of visits, we can't tell exactly because um, while output goes up, which requires should require more visits, um, the buying probability um, actually also goes up, Q of X uh, here. And so as a result, what happens to the number of visits is, is not clear here. So um, we, can't, uh, we can't exactly say. Um, but for vacancies, we know that they are going to go up. So this wraps up um, our analysis of technology shocks.